everybody and welcome to this week's lesson where I'm just drawing up a, a general shape of a, pl a, a pot plant. There you can hopefully see it a little bit just in watercolour pencil and now I'm just going to add moist paint so I've wet my brush added the colour and I'm adding that directly to the dry paper. As you can see I really have to move the colour around, push it with the bristles of the brush. It does slide quite well because I have a lot of water on my brush as well but it's really up to me to push the colour where I need it to go. With this technique you'll notice that the paint stays exactly where I put it and it doesn't run like it typically does with watercolour. So using this technique onto dry paper is really really good where you need control for the area that the colour is going into. It might be something very detailed or something very specific that you want to show in, in focus in a painting um, and just by not allowing the watercolour to run into soft wet paper you get really really specific and sometimes well pretty much often hard edges. So you can soften them by wiping the edges away and making them a little bit less harsh. But as you can see it, I'm dotting down here. I want the green to be in a specific area. I want the pink to stay in a specific area. What I'll do here is add a little bit more water and you can see there with the pink and it just sits and puddles on the page, but it's not running and bleeding into the fibers of the paper. So it's not to say that you can't use really runny paint with this technique, but the main thing to remember is don't allow the paper to be wet in an entire area when you're working. Just add the water in with the colour. And as that dries, that can still puddle and have very interesting little formations of, of tone and depth of colour in it, but it doesn't... Um, it doesn't bleed out of that set border. Now we're getting on to the second example, which is, is kind of halfway between really wet paper and totally dry paper. So I'm dabbing on little bits of moisture onto the paper where I want a little bit of softness to happen. So you kind of have to think through a little bit of what you're painting so that you know that areas where you don't want hard lines you've wet that paper and then areas where you may want a firmer line like here on the pot I don't have too much water at all so um, I guess sometimes with watercolor if you're not a big pre-drawer like me I just like to be in the moment draw up things I need to to help me with proportion but other than that I just like to really go freely with watercolour. If you're not a big drawer um, this might be the exception where you want to draw up certain areas that you know you want to remain firm and then the other areas that you can then go oh this is where I'm going to wet really wet the paper you've got a little bit of a guide to where that is. Because, you know, doing pot plants, that's really free. But if you're doing like a chair that's in shadow with a, a cushion and a cat on it, you know, you really do need more specific drawing guides than what I do. Um, with the colour as well, the more water you use, the more diluted the colour's going to get. So just be aware of that. And when the paper's really, really wet, you'll become very aware of it because you'll quite often think, oh, I thought I put that colour on a lot stronger and then it dries and it's soaked into the paper and the pigment has dispersed. So these are the kind of things that you will learn through really just experience and practice. And the more that you set aside a few minutes, you know, a day, a week, a, a little bit of a weekend, whatever, just to experiment and try these little um, practice bits that I'm doing here and you will learn for yourself. It's really hard to just talk someone through that kind of knowing. It's like, oh, the, pa the paper was too wet or oh, the paper was too dry. So looking at these two, you can see the pot is softer on the one I've just finished. And then here in this area and the, compared to that area, you can see there's softness 
and then there's hard defined line on the right. So going into the last technique, I'm really applying a lot of water. I know you can't really see it here, but I'm, I'm really going out beyond where I expect to be painting as well. So the whole area of that page is quite wet. Once you get used to this technique, you'll even know how wet the page should be or how long you might want to wait until you start putting colour on so it's just damp. Um, it, it's really kind of a fun little investigative journey that you have learning all these little things about watercolour. I love the randomness of watercolour, but being able to control the randomness a little bit is, is even more exciting, I think. So you can see here as I'm adding the colour, there's no hard edges. Even when I'm doing a, a line like at the bottom of the pot, it's still not a hard edge, it's just a softened line. I can add strength of colour into my flowers and you can see that the water immediately, the wet paper, just takes that colour and makes the edge disappear. It just softens off the borders. So don't be afraid to paint a lot of um, pigment on. I've mentioned this earlier because as this dries, you will find that it dissipates, that the colour softens a little bit. So really, um, you'll have to get used to adding a lot more strength to your colours when you do a wet, wet on wet technique. There's obviously a softness about this technique that you don't get with the other two. Um, so really that lends itself to certain types of um, situations in paintings. If you're doing a subject, say you're doing a bird on a branch and you really want to put the focus on all the feathers, so that's exactly when you would use wet on dry and dry brush technique. And then maybe the background that you don't want to have in focus that's where you'd have all the page would have been wet and you would have put all that soft background out of focus leaves, out of focus branches, um, anything, the sky, no hard edges because the eye goes to where the line and the contrast is sharp. Just keep that in mind when you're using this technique, you're going to give a less contrast effect even though you're using really bright colours, it still look at the softness of that compared to the first two. So I'll put it up here to show you all three together, wet on dry, half wet, half dry, and wet on wet. Now, looking back at the painting, this section here, and also this section here under the shadow and shadow up the top, you can see I've actually blended the colours from one colour to another. That is a really good example of using the wet on wet technique. It makes it much easier to blend from light to dark or from one colour to another. So here I'm just using ultramarine blue and a pre-mixed colour in my Derwent palette, which is a maroon colour, which is essentially ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and magenta pre-mixed. But I've wet this page first, now I'm adding the maroon colour from the bottom up. By doing that it actually gives you the feeling that it may be a colour um, influence from say a terracotta tile or something like that on the ground. Now I'm going to add in a line that I want to keep pretty sharp so I didn't wet the paper I, I kept the paper dry but I'm allowing when it touches the wet paint of the ultramarine blue it's going to bleed in a little bit and going across again I'm I haven't I've got a wet brush with with the brown on it but I'm not using really wet paper here this is wet on dry technique and that wet on dry technique is a really really good um, one to use for something like a door, for timber. You want to have, think about it, you want to have the control to show the grains of the timber, the lines in the timber, and even in between individual boards, you need that nice sharp line. 
otherwise what you're trying to paint isn't going to be believable. Timber is a hard finish, so you don't want to use really soft um, lines. Mind you, the variation of the timber door colour could be wet on wet. Then once that's dry, you put on the fine lines that don't bleed. Now, I forgot to video this, but I added a shadow you can see in one whole area. And in this corner here, I just added more ultramarine blue. That's it for another week, everyone. Hope you've enjoyed this little lesson. And just remember, it's really good to practice how much water you put onto the paper. Of course, the paper that you use can vary as well. Some quality paper can take a lot of water um, and some cheaper paper buckles quite quickly. So there is a lot to learn and discover. I typically muck around with different papers, but I always try to use a 300 grams per square meter, so 300 GSM. It doesn't matter what texture, you can prefer a smooth paper or a rough paper. But the thing is, if you've got at least a 300 GSM, which is quite a heavy paper, you can actually put a lot of water onto it. So a good thing to do is just have a fun page where you muck around with throwing lots of water on and then here you can see that I've added, there's been a lot of water on here already and I've added a very wet paint to it as it dries. Um, and yeah, just play around. That's how you get better at your judgment. Um, when to add a different colour so that it doesn't bleed and mix and it stays separate or it forms a hard edge or you want to have little patterns forming so you know how dry the paper has to be. Okay, uh, enough of that. Let's be creative this week and I look forward to seeing you again on Friday. Bye everyone.